Empty backfield for Clark. Four-man rush, excellent protection again. And even though they're dropping seven guys, they haven't been able to cover the Penn State wideouts very well. That yeah. was Dion Butler. Uh, you mentioned the protection. I mean, Daryl Clark had a chance to sit back there comfortably, look at the whole field, watch the whole route develop, and then come to the guy that he liked to match up on, Dion Butler. They've got the skill outside, but it starts up front for Penn State. The Nittany Lions came in here really expecting to be challenged on several fronts by Wisconsin. And they thought they would find out a lot more about their ball club. So far, they have not been challenged. Clark to the sideline. What a wow. route. What a throw and a nice catch by Jordan Norwood. He kept it alive. So did Clark. Just bought time in the pocket and hit the throw. Well, Clark was able to just muscle this one out. And Norwood, with some fancy footwork along the sideline, came back to the football and still kept his feet in bounds. Only needed that one foot in. He got the right foot in. But credit Norwood for seeing his quarterback under duress and coming back to the football. And great awareness of what he, where he was on the field, not only to come back, but to look down and find the sideline. First and goal, Nittany Lions. Royster is the single setback behind Clark. Clark wants to throw, quarterback draw. Royster gave him a block, and look at the power of Clark. He just dragged Mario Goins into the end zone. The extra dimension you yeah. talked about. When he gets a couple of yards away from the end zone, there's no denying it. And Wisconsin knows that's where Penn State likes to run him is in the red zone. You got to be patient and let that back get in front of you. Royster gets an excellent block on Levy. And Clark able to, to muscle that one into the end zone again. Very, very impressive performance by the Penn State Nittany Lions. Undefeated rank six. They'll move up at least one spot in next the week's poll. play is being reviewed. Well, we now, were what here going to look at here, yeah. Todd, is whether his knee whether the down. ball was across when his yeah. knee went down. I think it was. Well, we were here last week, and we saw Ohio State play Wisconsin as we take another look at the run by Daryl Clark. I think it's a touchdown. It was ruled a touchdown on the field. They'd have to have convincing evidence. This this angle might show it to us, whether the knee was down before the ball got across. That's a touchdown. Sure looks like it. Or at least it's close enough that not going to be able to yeah. reverse it. That ball, I yeah. believe, is easily across the goal. In a couple weeks, Penn State will play Ohio State in Columbus. And... Uh, Obviously, that's going to be a big ball game, and I'm not saying that Penn State After will win review, that game. The play stands as called. Touchdown. That'll There's be a, a tough butt game. in there, isn't there? Well, the, the only butt in there is that watching both of those teams, this is the better football team yeah, right absolutely. now. Absolutely. I mean, th this I is agree. the best football team, I think, in the Big Ten right now. But they still have some tough games on the road before this thing is all said and done. The Ohio State offense today, by the way, did not have a touchdown. They struggled against Purdue as quarter. Hill. And Penn State will give them all those runs up the middle they want to try for the 24-point lead to protect. Clark now putting on that neoprene sleeve over the elbow that he banged up in the first half. Well, this is a, a big opportunity for Penn State. They, they are in control of this football game right now. They have not won consecutive games in the Big Ten on the road for several years. There's several times out now. And this is a, uh, a great opportunity for them to take another step towards their goals. Jared Odrick made that last tackle. One of the Wisconsin players is down. Wait on that leg, and Bill Nagy, number 76, has checked in in his place. Third down, quarterback rollout. Diving for the sticks. It appeared he was just short of it. About a yard short was Everidge. Gave it a nice try. Yeah, he gave it a nice try, and Navarro Bowman there. Their leading tackler, great hustle to the sideline from his outside linebacker position. 
forced Everidge out short of the first down. It's interesting. You see him running tonight after not running the previous two weeks. The kid's got some skill in that department. Well, I think he's got, like, set the record for quarterbacks for vertical leap. He's got powerful legs and uh, can got some pretty quick feet. Nortman finally gets off a good kick after a miserable night. That's a beauty. 50 yards. Here's Reese Davis. Back and forth they go, Mike. Oklahoma State and Missouri. Kendall Hunter, fifth in the nation in rushing. A little option pitch from Zach Robinson, and he's gone. 68 yards running through a tackle, and Oklahoma State back on top, 14-10. Perhaps it is going to be an offensive shootout in the second half. LSU scored right before the half. Touchdown pass from Jared Lee, uh, Jared Lee to Chad Mitchell. 20 to 7, third quarter, not far from starting in game. If LSU loses, of course, that would be two members of the top five to go down. And Penn State fans would be happy about that because they would be able to move up at least two notches from six. It will be interesting to see who will get the number one spot. I mean, how impressive was Texas yeah. beating Oklahoma, the team we thought was the best team we had right. seen by far. Texas handled them by 10. You almost get the feeling that no, no, but no matter who else is in that mix, Texas, by virtue of that, would be able to jump. Yeah, they got a great chance of jumping. Absolutely. Uh, that was an impressive win today for the Longhorns. Of course, Alabama's sitting there idle going, hey, yeah. hold on a second. Well, Alabama, Alabama made a huge jump last week to number two. Yeah. Clark dumps it off to Royster, <laughs> flag down. Royster still on his feet, dives out to the 38-yard line. Now we'll check the penalty. I think it's pretty obvious going to be a hold on Wisniewski. Yeah. DeAndre Levy was there to make a play, and Wisniewski got a hold of him. His uncle Steve did that a couple of times, and his, uh, his father Leo was a defensive lineman. He was held a few times. During the play, holding, offense number 61, half the distance from the previous spot. Repeat the down. Well, Stefan has really come on, though, uh, as the right guard, the youngest member of this offensive line, the first-time starter. Played at Pittsburgh Central Catholic. Right there is the hold on Levy. And uh, this play's coming back. The first, I think that's the first penalty now for Penn State in the ballgame. Talk about how do you win on the road? You don't turn it over. Yeah. You don't get penalized. You play solid on special teams. Penn State has done all of those things tonight. Second and 20 after the penalty. And Stefan Green, number 21, the speedster is in. He is taken down on a big shot by Jonathan Casillas. Here's Holland. Guys, first off, Craig Urbic is out for the rest of the game for Wisconsin with a left knee injury. But more concerning for Penn State, Evan Royster just came to the sideline. He's holding his arm. They sent him to Fong Green as a replacement. I'll check on that and get back to you as soon as we have an update. Thanks, Holly. Green, the highly talented player out of the Bronx in New York. Joe Paterno says there's so many kids in the inner city who are good, it's so hard to find them. A lot of them can't do the academic work yet. Clark under pressure, throws on the run, and wide open is Norwood. And Norwood is out to the 28-yard line for a first down. Clark also throws pretty well on yeah. the run, doesn't he? Well, and again, that's that extra dimension. Wisconsin dials up a blitz. They bring extra pressure. They force Daryl Clark out of the pocket, but the play's not dead. Just because the protection was not there, it doesn't mean that the play is not there. Daryl Clark gets out. He keeps his vision downfield, and he throws the ball accurately to Norwood for a first down. That's a big-time play by the junior quarterback. And this crowd was just starting to get back in it a little right. bit. I mean, they were revved up on that third and long, and Daryl Clark shut him up. 21 yards on third and 20, and they have made one play after another this year. Big plays of more than 20 yards. And there was another one off the fingertips of Deion Butler. Now, this football team, they're so explosive, and one of the things about them, they have a lot of very intelligent players on this offense and experienced guys, guys that have played a lot of football and guys who are really smart football players. 
when they get in there what they call their 11 personnel group which is one back and one tight end and the rest wide receivers they have over 50 formations that they use now you can't do that if you don't have a lot of guys that can right. handle a lot of stuff mentally with their offense Penn State has that with this football team second and ten Royster back in the ball game out to the 30 to the 31. Here's Holland. Well, off the field, they're pretty intelligent too, Todd. This offense, everybody on this starting offense for Penn State averages above a 3.0 GPA. Daryl Clark is a junior and on track to graduate in December. All the offensive linemen get some of these. AQ Shipley, Labor Employment Relations and Crime Law Justice, dual major. He'll graduate in the spring. <laughs> Katarian graduated in December with a Rehabilitation Services degree and a Psychology double major that goes on and on. This is a pretty heady group. And Holly, they have graduated 75%, which out of the top 25 football schools is number three. Clark sprints out of trouble. Crows somehow kept wow. the play alive made a perfect toss down the sideline to James McDonald. And he got drilled on this one. The, the one where he rolled out of the end zone, he didn't get hit. This time, rolling to his left, he took a big-time shot. Watch him know that he's going to get hit, but still enough arm strength to get this one out there. He wasn't able to step into it, mm. but delivered a perfect throw on the sideline and took a hit at the end of the play. He knows he's going to get leveled. He's running to his left. He just flicks the wrist and throws a perfect pass. It's almost unfair. Clark again after a nice play fake. Wide open. Butler. Touchdown, Penn State. There is a flag down, but I think it's a defensive holding for pass interference because he was, the corner was beat so bad he tried to reach out and grab Butler. But he missed. During the play, holding defense number 21. Penley is declined. Touchdown is good. Butler was working on Allen Lankford, and he went a little out and up on him. And Lankford bit on the out fake and did the only thing he could do was try to grab and stop him from running by. You see, he's beat badly. He grabs, and Butler's still able to stay on his feet and track down the football for a touchdown. In half of a quarter, Clark is 7 out of 8, 144 yards. Not bad. Mm. And, and you got to think, this is an audition for the rest of the season. And you got to think he's already got the fans on his side. Well, but you got to remember also that Penn State is guarding a 41 to 7 lead. Oh, sure. I'm and not, they're, saying, they're it's, I'm not saying it's fair, yeah. and I'm not saying it's an equal competition. I'm just saying that's the way it is. Yep, absolutely. And that's a good throw. So it was the first one. That was to Isaac Anderson. Already has the same number of completions as average. Two. Now Shear takes off. You know, the thing to remember about this Penn State defense, and, and you talked about it, we had the graphic up of the injuries and the guys that were dismissed from the team. Mm -hmm. When you consider that those two guys that were dismissed, those two tackles, Chris Baker and Phillip Taylor, probably both would have been starters on this defensive front. And the guys that are playing now, are, would have been rotating in yeah. and the depth they would have had. If Sean Lee was healthy, how good this defensive football team would be. And yeah. Sean Lee wasn't even on the list. I yeah. mean, he's an All-American in waiting. We just showed you the list of all the guys who were defensive ends and defensive tackles who were lost for a variety of reasons. I'll tell you what, the other thing that that says is it Hill running over people down to the 26-yard line. Hill revitalized a little bit. Yeah. They still can run north and south. They just have had a tough time against this defensive front. And, uh, again, just one, one more thing about the defense. It, it says a lot about Tom Bradley and what he's done as the guy in charge sure of the does. defense and defensive line coach Larry Johnson for how they've been able to kind of work around the suspensions, the dismissals, the injuries to put together an outstanding defense. Yeah, you've got to give the coaches a tip of the cap to... I mean, most people don't have the kind of depth that they can even field guys who can play at this level, let alone field guys under these circumstances who can play at this level. 
And here's what they've done in the last several years. They have been a really good defensive team. This is the kind of Penn State team I grew up watching. Always in the top ten. Always tough against the run. Linebackers who can blitz and run and cover stuff. And coaches as intense as Tom Bradley. Look at that. 30th year Tom Bradley's been at Penn State. He's been in charge of the defense for the last several years. But 30 years involved here. Sheer too high and it's picked off. Sergeant again. Intercepted by Sergeant. His second Sergeant looking for a block across midfield and tripped. Boy, Goes he got down it to 45, and Shear was the guy who's credited with the tackle. Boy, he got a block from Aaron Maven. The, the pass rushing phenom turned into blocker and got a huge block. The overthrow by Shear is going to be tracked down by Sergeant and watch as this return starts. The block he's going to pick up from Aaron Maven, number 59, right? Here on the center, Moffitt. Oh. Wow. D. Cleeter. Oh. Boy, it's just an accident waiting to happen when you get that kind of an angle. And Sean Lee loving it. I'll tell you right now, when this team goes into Ohio State, and that's, you know, how wicked a place to play that is. Yeah. They are going to be favored, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were favored by more than a touchdown going into that ballgame. This is a really good club. Well, now, got defensively, I think I'd like to, if you're Joe Paterno, he says he wants to see the team challenge to see yeah. how they respond. I'd still like to see them play a tougher offense. Yeah. Somebody who can move the ball up and down the field. He knew it was going to be the same kind of offensive year. Everybody talks about the Big 12 or the SEC or the Big 10. Uh, the Big 12 offensively, I think, is hands down the best conference oh, in college yeah. football. Not even close. Tight formation this time. And Penn State will run out of it with Chaz Powell, a wide receiver, sort of a wing back. Chaz Powell is a guy that uh, has kind of emerged. He's a young guy, a freshman out of New Freedom, Pennsylvania, and really they were expecting to have A.J. Wallace kind of be the backup to Derrick Williams and do some stuff on offense. And uh, A.J. Wallace had a, an injury in training camp and couldn't do a lot of that stuff, and so the guy that stepped up into that role was Chaz Powell, and he's been kind of a big play guy in limited action so far this year. Royster is back in a tailback. St. Jean made the interception and returned it 35 yards in the first mistake that Daryl yep. Clark made all night long. Well, St. Jean was right here, and Daryl Clark, as he goes back, his eyes are going to be looking right here. He's not going to pick up the linebacker that drifts into his vision. He never sees him, and St. Jean is able to step in there and make the interception, the first mistake that Daryl Clark has made all evening. Boy, Clark really upset with himself and was trying to take it out on St. Jean at the sideline. Look at A.Q. Shipley grabbing his quarterback and saying, hey, relax. We still are going to get out of here with what we want. Shear comes out throwing, hits Kyle Jefferson. Let me take you back to the beginning of the ball game, and you talked, as you did last week, how important it was to get the ball to Travis Beckham. They haven't done it. They get Garrett Graham back this week, arguably their second-best offensive player. Important to get it to him. They haven't done it. Yeah, Graham got the pass. The, the first pass that Shear threw was to Garrett Graham, but that was a, a long after the game was, uh, was decided. And those two guys are just quality receivers, and uh, to go with their power running game just has been a little disjointed tonight for the Wisconsin offense. Yeah, 41 to 7, it hardly matters who you're throwing this one to. Yeah. Intended for Beckham, and that was too high. Second down. Sheer getting a chance to play in a blowout after Everidge takes a seat. And Clark 
it's the kind of thing you want to see out of a kid who's played nearly a perfect game, makes a mistake late yeah. in the ball game, and is really upset with himself. And it's the kind of work ethic you talked about earlier. He wants to be as good as he possibly can. We got another update from Reese. All right, Mike, as you mentioned, Oklahoma State took the lead against Missouri. Here's how they did it. A 40-yard touchdown pass from Zach Robinson to Damian Davis, who is all by himself, sort of reminiscent of the Illinois game for Missouri. 21-17, they're headed to the fourth on ESPN2. Tell you what, that's going to be a conference much like the SEC always yeah. is, where I think people are going to knock each other off. And it's going to be very tough for somebody to uh, just take a claim to number one. Shear trying to get a block, knocked out of bounds to the 42-yard line. We talked about Texas kind of being a little bit under the radar in their big win today at Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma State's a little bit under yep. the radar. You know, everybody's talked about Chase Daniel in Missouri and Chase Daniel kind of the, the front runner to the Heisman Trophy at this point in the season. But Oklahoma State quietly uh, scoring a lot of points and playing good football out of Stillwater as well. I think they were one of those teams when people referred to them would say, yeah, they're really good, but. Yeah. Well, they got a chance to make a big statement tonight. Sheer good protection, throws underneath. Beckham has the first down to the 32-yard line. It's only his second catch. Beckham last year, 75 catches, 982 yards. Boy, is, is that, that any good? It's very good. He's had a tough start to his senior season. He missed the first two games with a hamstring injury. He came back and played. Then they had an off week, and he aggravated the hamstring during the bye week. And he missed the Michigan game. Didn't come into the game until the last five minutes of the game. Had a critical error at the end of that game. Beckham makes this catch, gets away from two tacklers, still on his feet to the 28. But he is uh, he's a very talented guy because he's he's not the biggest tight end in the Big Ten. He's 6'4", 200, or 6'5", about 235 pounds, but he's big enough to get in there and play tight end, and he's quick enough, fast enough, and runs good enough routes to, to go out as a wide receiver or a slot receiver as well. He's a very difficult guy to match up with. And I think at the next level, I think you'll get a chance. If he can put on 10 pounds and not lose the speed he has, I think he'll be able to play on Sunday. Shear sidearmed that one and had it picked. Intercepted by Mark Rubin, his second of the year. And Rubin is a guy who is a great story. He was an accomplished high school swimmer. And guess who he beat several times in high school? Michael Phelps. Well, lost maybe 40, but he won five. <laughs> Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, stick around. When we come back, we're going to take you inside the Penn State Tunnel and find out what the 15 seniors are playing for this season. Camp Randall Stadium, where some of the faithful have given up the ghost. It's 41-7 to Penn State over Wisconsin with 9.32 to go in the game. Last three Wisconsin drives have ended with interceptions. So just when Shear, who came in off the bench, thought he might have something going, he's been picked by the Penn State defense, which has been really good tonight. The Penn State offense has been exceptional. And when you take a look at what is ahead for Penn State, Michigan, by name, should be a huge ball game. But right now, it doesn't look like it. Ohio State's going to be the biggie. And they still have Michigan State to go on November 22nd. But right now, and now they have reviewed the interception and say no. And Wisconsin will get the ball back. If you look at the remainder of that schedule, they're going to yep. be favored maybe heavily in yeah. all those ball games. Well, here's the replay of the, uh, it looked like Mark Rubin had the interception. There's, looked like the ball may have caught the ground on the way down. It was an excellent effort and play by Rubin. Boy, is that tough to overrule, overturn that one. Yeah. 
Christie from that angle. It looked like he had his arm underneath it the whole way. Well, it was ruled an interception on the field from those replays. Well, I don't know why the ball is, is here, though. They, they didn't throw the football from there, did they? No. Okay. From an incomplete there. Boy, that looked pretty close. Looked better than close. And now I think... Illegal snap. 74 offense. Five yards. The down remains third. John Moffat, the center, called for an illegal snap. So they move the ball back to the 33-yard line where it's third and 11. Shear, who came on in release of Everidge, had that one tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it's incomplete. Had Maurice Evans in his face. Shear was walking toward the sideline as if the punt team might come on, but uh, I don't think so. Everage on the headset behind Brett Bielema. Fourth and 11, obviously you're going to go for it down by this much. Here comes the blitz. Hit from behind, the loose ball. Well, I tell you, he has been everywhere today. I mean, from the left end, from the right end, this kid is a great skill yeah. player. Well, obviously it helps when you're winning 41-7. to 7, You can pin your ears back, but that's how he plays all the time. I mean, he just is going to go right around Josh Oglesby. Watch this speed rush. Too fast to the corner. Shear has no chance, and then he's got that instinctive feel to, to slap the ball out. He did it to average and caused a fumble right before the half that was critical, and he caused another one right there. Sophomore from Ellicott City, Maryland. And right now, he is in that three-man rotation. But they've got two guys who can really rush yeah. the passer. Well, that brings up another point. You know, people have been saying for the last couple of years, maybe Joe Paterno should step down. Maybe the game's passed him by. Maybe recruiting's passed him by. I don't think so. There, there's some, <laughs> talent, some talent and some young talent on this football team. And they are as explosive and as diversified offensively as anybody out there and defensively uh, they've got speed and they've got depth and they've got young talent i mean this is a this is an impressive football team well we had a, a chance to visit with coach last night and it's almost like going to visit royalty you get yeah. the same feeling only it's better than royalty he has earned that kind of respect royalty you're born into it you know, you just happen to have the uh, the silver chalice handed to you. Joe Paterno has earned it by being at Penn State basically his entire adult life. Yeah. First as a, an assistant to Rip Engel and then as the head coach for 43 years and is the winningest coach in the history of this ball game, uh, uh, of this game. He's done it with class. He's done it with dignity. And I'll tell you one thing for sure. When he decides to hang it up and let's all pray that it's totally his decision and nobody else influences it, we will never see his like again. Yep. There will not be anybody that does it the right way for so long and so successfully at one school. It just will not happen again. And we'll all be the poorer for yep. it. Well, I've said for a long time, my opinion has always been the same with when, in regards to Coach Paterno and when he stops coaching is that he's earned the right, in my opinion, to decide when he wants to stop coaching there. For what he's done for that university, for the football program, it should be nobody else's decision except his. And I have complete trust that he will know when the right time to step down will be. And uh, he has still got the passion, he's got the fire, he's got a little bit of a bum leg right now, but uh, he is still every bit as involved in this program in all aspects as he ever was. Yes, he is. And you had the... Uh great privilege of playing for on a great ball club and I can only imagine uh, uh, the, the kind of memories you have for the rest of your life that just have to be exceptional 
Think your team has the best uniforms in college football? Well, you're not alone, but Todd has the forum and his list of five favorites. We'll find out when we come back. You know, I bet Penn State's on that list. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Let me having you here. The all-new H3T, the most versatile Hummer ever. John Shattuck and I approve this message. The ads attacking John Shattuck are just false. Out-of-state Democrats, trial lawyers, and big labor are distorting John Shattuck's record. They're spending millions to fund liberal East Coast lawyer Bob Lord. Lord's attack is fundamentally false, says the Arizona Republic's Bob Robb. Shattuck is an independent, principled Arizona leader. Bob Lord has nothing good to say about himself and nothing honest to say about John Shattuck. Bob Lord, false attacks, liberal record. We need John Shattuck fighting for us. Phillips and Associates, can I help you? Yes, we can help if you've been arrested for a DUI or any criminal offense. And more good news, your first visit is free. Call us now to learn how an experienced, aggressive attorney can give you the representation you deserve. Our convenient payment plans allow us to begin with little or no money down. Find out why we're one of Arizona's largest consumer law firms by calling now to set up your free office visit. 602-258-8888. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Hummer, like nothing else. The Bloomin' Onion One from the Outback Steakhouse flying around Madison, Wisconsin tonight, providing our aerial coverage. Outback Steakhouse is a proud sponsor of the 2009 Outback Bowl to be played January 1st in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Wisconsin takes over at the seven yard line under eight minutes to go. Shear is in at quarterback and Rent Meester, number 34, the fullback, gets a carry. Let's go to Reese Davis. All right, guys, the Gators have answered the challenge from LSU and already scored one 27 14. A little option to Jeffrey Demp. That's world class speed, boys and girls. Not really him in. 42 yards, 34 14, Florida. Not yet in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma State clinging to that four-point lead over Missouri. They just fumbled near midfield, though, and Missouri has the ball at the moment. Boy, the Gators showing that serious speed tonight. Flag is down on this play. I don't know anybody else that has more pure speed than the Gators. Illegal formation, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Offense, five yards, half the distance, repeat the down. We've been talking about where teams might be. I mean, just assume for the minute that uh, Missouri and LSU would both lose. Who moves up? Uh, Texas with that huge win over Oklahoma. I think if anybody moves up, they've got the nod. Uh, Alabama was idle, so maybe Texas, Penn State, and Missouri, if these scores hold. Would you, or Alabama, uh, Texas, Penn State, and Alabama, would you go for that? Yeah, I'd go for that. I'd go for that. It still doesn't matter a whole lot at this point still, but. No, but for those of us who drink the Kool-Aid every yeah. week, yeah. you know, we want to see a number one that we can. Well, when you beat you know, number one and, and, and a game like that, I mean, they, you know, there are a lot of eyes on that Texas team today. Yes, and, sir. Uh, Alabama was not playing. So, the eyes uh, of Texas, in yeah. fact. And everywhere else. So, uh, 
That was a very impressive win, and I, I could very easily see them move into that number one spot. You're just trying to be a poet like me, aren't you? <laughs> trying to entertain in that way. <laughs> Elizabeth Barrett Blackledge. <laughs> Sheer in the end zone under pressure. And shoved out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Here's Holly Rowe. Standing and Penn State trying to sneak into those top standings. You know, their wide receiver, Derek Williams, is very open. He said, we are playing for a national championship. We talk about it every single day. When we break our huddle, we say national championship. He's not apologetic. He's not thinking that they're looking too far, too far in advance. And he said, you know, Joe keeps telling us, take care of things one game at a time. But he said, if you take care of the little things, the big things will be in place. That's the kind of thing, Holly, that he has stressed his entire career, and he has proven to be right time after time. End over end kick. Williams at the 48 makes the fair catch there. 40-yard kick. No return. Todd's top five uniforms when we come back. OnStar. I've received a signal you've been in a crash. I'm contacting emergency services. OnStar reporting a front-end crash on Wakefield. Chevy Malibu, airbags deployed, injuries reported. Please respond. Emergency services, Chevy Malibu. Ma'am, help is on the way. Okay, and I'll stay on the line with you till they get there. Automatic crash response, built into 11 Chevy models. The strength to build a better future can be found in the Army. With leadership skills and training in over 150 careers, the Army takes you to your strongest point. And whatever you do after that, in your career or your community, you'll just keep getting stronger. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. See what it's like at GoArmy.com. Make a dash to the big taste of Papa John's XL Explorer Pizza. An extra large with any three toppings, $13.99. Call or click PapaJohns.com. Plus, get a $3 coupon for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull DVD. Not many sure things on the road to happiness, but there's one. Put your cash in an orange savings account from ING Direct, and it'll grow. The secret is, you got a pen? High interest. Tell your friends. Save your money. Whatever you're working on, Advance will help you keep the wheels turning. It's tough to lose back-to-back -back heartbreakers and then get thumped like this, but that's what happened to Wisconsin, and uh, he's not happy. But he's got a lot of room to stretch yes, out. Yes, he that's does. For sure. Yes, he does. Four or five seats all of himself. And that's an incomplete pass. Joe Suey, there's another familiar name. Take a look at Todd's top five uniforms as Blackledge rolls out UCLA, the yeah. Bruins in that great light blue. Notre Dame, maybe the most recognizable uniform to anybody. Alabama number three. The Wolverines of Michigan. And guess who's number one? Yeah. The Nittany Lions of Penn State. Even in, even in the all-white is yeah. just iconic to see those uniforms. And I, th they don't do it anymore, but I swear in the past, the uniform numbers were smaller than they were supposed to be. That made the players look bigger. I guarantee you that somewhere down the stretch, somebody did that, and I forgot to ask Coach about it last night. Well, even the press guy. Take a look at this. Most both teams try to come up with shots of seniors or something, but this uh, just the, the the Penn State helmet with scratches on the white and on the back, just the black shoes. Yeah. 
That's and uh, the, the players have complained about it for years. <laughs> I'm sure they did in your day. Let's well, wear, you know, change them. Well, the the uniforms are fancier now because they've got blue face masks. We have the, the gray face masks. They, they've really spruced it up with the blue face masks. Oh, now. yeah, that really yeah. that really changes the image there with that blue face mask. Well, the thing about that uniform is whether it's white or blue, you're flipping through the channels and you turn on a game and you see it, you know immediately who it is. You know it's Penn State and uh, there's no question about it. It's been the same First forever. foul, roughing the passer. 45 defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. And if, if you're a little bit older, you go back and you see a Mississippi uniform. You know exactly. Yeah. Uh, Old Miss, uh, Southern Cal's uniforms, right. uh, they're uh, immediately identifiable. And it's, uh, you, you, you just get a great warm feeling, wow. as you said, when you're changing sta uh, channels and you go, oh, there yeah. it is. I can watch this one. This will be good. Now, I'll tell you a funny story. When, when I was in school, uh, we, there was a period of time where we had some guys that had some ankle injuries. And so Nike was supplying the shoes for, for Penn State at the time. And uh, so they needed some high top shoes. Well, the only high tops that Nike made were white. So these white shoes came in and all of a sudden we had a few more guys with bad ankles because they wanted the white shoes. <laughs> So we had maybe a dozen guys with these white high top shoes with a blue swoosh and you know everybody was all excited. Well the next game we won but we didn't play great. That was like maybe 20 to 10 or something. And we came into the locker room on Sunday after that game and everybody that had the high top shoes, they had painted them straight black. They painted over the stripe, painted over the show, looked like Herman Munster shoes. From that point on, I was like, man, my ankle feels all right. I, I don't feel so bad after yeah. all. But now, you know, the black shoes are in vogue. Everybody wears black shoes now. We were wearing black shoes when it wasn't cool to wear black shoes. And, of course, the players coming in might want to see something different, a stripe here or there. But when they're done and they're alumni, they're not about to let the new guys make any changes. And, of course, Joe Paterno isn't going to let well, them make Joe, any changes Joe either. always told us, he said, you know, if, if everybody had plain uniforms, we'd have stars and stripes and bells and whistles and all this. But everybody's got the fancy stuff. This is Penn State. And I, re I really think that even the guys that are playing now, th there's something to that uniform. And there everybody is. knows that it's, you know, it's been worn by all the greats that have been before them. And it's part of the tradition. It's part of the legacy, the black shoes and the plain uniforms. And no name on the back. Yeah. Which is an announcer I hate. You would like to have the, <laughs> the name on the back. But uh, I'm certainly not going to suggest that. I get in a lot of trouble for that one. Suey. Inside the five. Devlin's pass complete. His dad, Matt, and two brothers played in the 70s. His granddad, Steve, was an All-American in 1947. And his great-granddad, Bob Higgins, was an All-American in 1915. And the head coach from 1930 to 1948. He is the living embodiment of the entirety yeah. of Penn State football history. I'm a little surprised to see Penn State throwing as much as they are right now at this point in the game. I know they've got their backup quarterback, Pat Devlin, in and trying to get him some work, trying to give him some live action and not just make it pure mop up, but 48 to 7. And they're trying to add to that score. To 48. 25 is Brandon Beecham getting a carry. Well, I remember hearing a coach years ago complain about the other team scoring a lot of points at the end of the game, and he was told, you know, it's your responsibility to stop yeah. me, not the other way around. Well, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. I just don't know that you need to throw more than you run. No, I'm, I'll concur with that. They're down at the one with the clock running, 255 to go in the game. This is a team that's averaged 44.8 points a game. They'll be at least close to that, if not above it, and Devlin sneaks his way into the end zone. No signal yet, but his waist is over the goal line, so you Your have to assume call. the ball might be in there. Of course, the umpire saw it 30 seconds ago, but the linesmen have to run in and get their call. Now, the umpire's staring down. <laughs> he can see the majority of the quarterback's body lying in the end zone, but he doesn't make the call. He waits for the two guys to come in from the side. Somebody's going to have to explain this to me without yelling at me, which might be difficult. The point after makes it 48-7 to 7 and not even a whimper 
out of the stands. They are headed out of here. Let's take a look at some of the images from this game. Tonight. be close to number one after this and in the era of videotape sometimes it's nice to see those still images mm -hmm. they uh, illustrate a lot of things that have gone on tonight coming up next on ESPN hope you'll stay tuned for Sports Center. some of the stories they'll be covering big wins on campus will there be a new number one team you betcha and the Red Sox Rays game two how about the Rays that uh, as soon as they remove devil from their name, they become world beaters. Do you believe in symbols? I yeah. believe that. Gil Reith is deep. It's 48 to 7. Mercifully, only two minutes and 40 seconds left to go. Well, Joe Paterno said he wanted to see his team challenged, yet still win. Well, they weren't even challenged tonight. They were just dominant against the Wisconsin team that had shown itself to be pretty good coming in here. This week on Monday Night Football, Eli Manning and the undefeated New York Giants go to Ohio to take on the Cleveland Browns. Can the Brownies hand the Giants their first loss of the season? It's Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Our coverage starts 7 Eastern, Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS. The Giants, first... 4-0 start in 18 years, and they have been dominant at the beginning. They've won 11 straight on the road, and the Browns haven't won on Monday night in a long time. That's kind of amazing. I mean, when, when Eli was still at Ole Miss and Peyton was starting to make a name for himself in the NFL, uh, very few people probably thought that Eli would ever measure up to Peyton. You know, and uh, they're different personalities, but physically they're very similar. Their style of play is very similar. Their seriousness and approach to the game is, is similar, although Peyton is a little bit more over the top from a preparation standpoint. But Isn't Eli has certainly, uh, boy, he has just played marvelously and, of course, has the Super Bowl championship like his brother and uh, is, uh, has really got himself up to a very similar level to his brother. When you practice kneel downs, like Peyton does. You are over the top. And when I first heard that, I said, you know, you've got to be kidding. Why do you practice kneel downs? And this is because there's a fake off of it. And if I don't do it the same time, every time, the same way, the fake will never work. Yeah. And he's right. I mean, yeah. he's got a reason for doing some of the screwiest stuff you can think of. But there is a reason behind it. And one of these days, maybe 10 years from now, that will pay off because he does it all the time. <laughs> he, he's just remarkable in yep. preparation, and he's, he's a great person. So is Eli. So is the whole family. That family is about as good as it gets. Now, we told you earlier, nobody has ever won the Big Ten with three conference losses, and this will be three in a row for the Badgers. And you just have to wonder, Todd, how do they recover from this after... I think it's easier to get over a loss like this than it is the heartbreakers, but this comes on the heels of them. Yeah, yeah, that's what makes it tough. I mean, it's one thing to just get whipped, uh, which they did tonight, but you're right. After after the two tough losses and then to uh, to come in here and play like this tonight, but, you know, obviously still some, some winnable games on that schedule for Wisconsin. I still don't think this is a bad football team, but I do think they... Where they may have taken a step forward last week in the loss to Ohio State, I don't think they took a step forward tonight. I think they took a step backwards in the game tonight. Well, I'm just afraid by the time you get to the Cal Poly Mustangs on November 22nd, nobody's going to care. Except the Cal Poly Mustangs. Our producer, Bo Garrett, just asked a great question. Will it be Dustin Shear or Allen Average at quarterback? next week I don't know the cheer showed enough in uh, his brief action uh, or if well I just don't know yeah. they probably don't either at this point 
And Oklahoma State have been handed an update now leading Missouri 28 17 with 630 to go and on there. I agree with you about Oklahoma State with so many great teams in that conference. I think people really underrated them and sort of dismissed them because of the schedule they had played but they're not going to dismiss them anymore. Nearly another pick. And that would have been another one for the Lydell Sargent. The Nittany Lions have not been 7-0 in 10 years. And they are going to be in just 22 seconds. And they've got a chance to run the table. And Joe Paterno has done that before. Several times without a national championship, he's gone unbeaten. And this one's incomplete and a real shot. Michael Maudie <laughs> with a hit. Another second generation guy. Rich yep. Maudie was a linebacker that played for, uh, for Joe Paterno. And was a terrific special teams player for a long time. Ouch. Just for his trouble, Shear got drilled with 13 seconds to go. Pressure coming, a little swing pass goes to Zach Brown, and he is taken down with eight seconds left to go in the ball game. You know, Holly talked about Derrick Williams and the goal of the national championship and them concentrating on the little things. That's Joe Paterno's mantra, and uh, that to me is probably the thing that is most impressive about this team tonight. Coming on the road, they did all the little things. I mean, they were solid offensively. Their yes. offensive line played well. Their defensive front was dominant in the game. And they were they were outstanding in special teams. They didn't get penalties. They didn't turn the ball over. Uh, they did all the little things well, and it added up to a very big win here in Madison. And they looked good in blue and white. Last play of the game, out of bounds at the five. The worst home loss for Wisconsin since 1989, when they were manhandled by Miami. 51 to 3 and you're right this was a statement game I think for Penn State for the rest of the country watch out the Nittany Lions are back and they are really really good this year the final score 48 7 coming up next on ESPN stay tuned for Sports Center for a wrap up of this game catch us on ESPN news in just a few minutes this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for Todd Blackledge Holly Rowe and our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good night from Madison.